Okay, with that pillar fitting nicely as you just saw, we're now going to do a couple of more small repairs to it just at the top where they always rot in that corner, the top where they rot. So we shape a little bit of metal just to fit snugly into that gap, MIG that in, go over the B pillar and double check everything's okay. Now we may not have to paint this until it's actually in the car. This one curiously in a different colour primer at the back. So it's pretty pretty good shape. We need to prep it up though to fit. So we want to do our usual one two buckle my shoe with the weld through primer. A one two with a weld through. Always plenty of poetry on this restoration for you poet lovers out there in YouTube land. Patreons too. Loving the poetry. I'll write a little, I'll read you a little poem just for the, the artistic viewers out there as well. We'll shove a poem in at one point. I'm going to write a Cortina poem, I reckon. Just for a little bit of variation. A variation on the theme. Um, it's car work. It's art. It's a bit of everything here. I do like my art, work, music, art, paintings, metalwork, sculptures, retro stuff, old washing machines as you saw in 14. We went for a spin. Not in the car yet. So, a little review, just a little break review there. There's actually a time gap in me walking off with that pillar and it being on the floor here. There's a, sort of a one week time gap because I had some time off. Recharged. That's what you've got to do. I mean, look after yourself as well. Don't get too, don't get too crazy, but try and look after yourself. Eat well. Diet and exercise, and have some R and R. Bit of fishing on R and R. Don't hurt your hands. Okay, so it's time. The metal's just over there for us to shape. Look, we can bend it in the metal form if we want, or we might find just over by the vice little bits of metal that have already been formed in previous repairs that may just go in for us. We'll see. A pause now for you as I just line up some metal for this. Not too tricky, top of the B pillar repair piece in. Bearing in mind there's a little oval cut out, that's designed for a rubber grommet to fit in. And two tangs go into two rubber grommet holes, one oval shape there, one further up that's already on the car. And that holds the window in, the window kind of hinges in these little rubber grommets. Because the, the rear window's slightly open on the two door, on this model anyway, some are fixed. On this one they hinge open using that as a pivot point so we need to just oval that out when we do the metal repair in a minute mig welder here ready gas on please and let's uh, let's get cooking then a few little tidy ups make sure it's ready prep this side with the weld through then we can spot weld back in for a nice finish and we'll get a really good seam weld where it fits very flushly into the cut that we did for the b pillar making a real nice repair that we'll be proud of and that you'll be proud of too. Always appreciating your feedback, going back over to the car, keeping the commentary going for you. Sill there, generally the Ford one this time, for the almost identical to the Express Steel Panels ones that they make. Going back, so well through on both sides. Look, a little bit of a repair to do here. We'll put the copper bar behind this. Then we'll weld from this side, <clears throat> that leaves you less to grind back, and then we'll clean it up, and that piece is ready. It needs some paint, so we're going to paint inside it before the pillar closes back over that, because you won't get the gun up as easily. This area we can bring the gun in at the back later if we want, when the quarter's off, and address that later on. Just saves having to interfere with this line, although we could do it, it means putting another grey prime mix on in the gun. I'm um, in two minds whether to do that now or not. But the quarter is going to come off and we're going to get the back of this panel, so we may as well do it in one operation. The gun can come in at the back and get that, so I'm not too worried as long as we put some primer on this part. This needs a finish of paint, not just the 182 being porous. We want to make this a sealed finish need to get up there with some paint as well. Bearing in mind the shell's been dipped and you've lost all your internal um, paint, so you've got to get back up. We try and get the gun in, but also it's really, really heavily doped with, a bit like me, 
uh, with wax oil. I say wax oil, it's Dinatrol. We feed the tube up when the car is built and we draw it down and it completely coats all the inside areas with uh, the wax. So you could in theory get away with bare metal, we're not going to, but there'd be that much wax oil inside this Dinatrol that it would uh, effectively paint it anyway. Although you could argue it gets hot, it'll dribble off, reveal metal, it's not a good thing. We do want paint, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that. Okay, enough wobbling. Let's get on and fix the V-pillar, then refit and spot weld it in position. Then we can fit that inner sill and get back level with that side. What will take us up to this part of the car. We're then going to do something exciting for you. I'm going to keep this clip running. So I'm going to take you slowly across now to another panel that's in come and have a look at this this is why you've got that time delay because this wasn't here just before have a look over here what do we see do you know what it is yet yep it's the front section of roof again off another donor car that's come to the rescue a shell was purchased with i think the bulkhead chopped out of it i don't think in fact actually this is the car that gave us the bulkhead gave us a lot of parts what was the position with this car can't remember it was a reasonably good shell supplied to me completely stripped knowing that i may need it in the future it was uh, sectioned up and put into stores and wrapped and put on a pallet it's now come out seeing some evidence of rust on the roof around where the this aftermarket sunroof was fitted but look what we've got the full repair section for the front trailing edge of our roof which we'll be working on soon sooner than you think probably episode 17 we'll see this maybe even late into 16 where we start to dissect these roof sections here and we're going to start to make some real nice repairs up at the top with our troublesome damaged roof section we're going to be able to do our usual repair system and get that nice run replaced. Sorry, I say a nice one, it's knackered now. Just look, feast your eyes on that corroded mess. But we're going to peel back and we're going to insert metal. We're going to unpick and refit, much as we've been doing in this series so far for you from 1 to 16. We could even be in 17 now. Do you know, it's hard for me to know whereabouts in the episodes we're up to, and I do apologise for that being inconsistent, although it is labelled on the actual video, um, thumbnail and tag. So I hope we try and catch you back up. Sometimes you'll hear me say we're in an episode that we're not. It's difficult just because you don't, or you're not always aware of how much footage you've actually put down into the can. So... For that reason, you try and make a guess as to roughly whereabouts you'd be um, based upon one hour, ten minute clips, one hour uh, clips, one hour, ten minute films, features. So you try and roughly work out where you are. I don't often get it wrong. Right. So that little intro will take us into where I said, which is B-pillar repair. Well, the setup. Let's go. Okay, the first part of this repair is in, the first patch piece, which is just an, under, an inlay of a shaped metal, two sides. But what I'm going to do, this area is on the car's brass finished, because you've got two panels that join here. So, hold on, I'll spin it round for you, sort of in a fork. So I've done that patch from the back, we now remove that little excess piece of metal. Patch is coming from the back. It's a vulnerable area, susceptible to water. 
and problems. So I'm going to braise fill in this piece. So I've laid it in slightly under so that the braise will infill the gap and bring it up to the level now. So braise is going to go around all these joins. And then when we come to fit this, um, the braise can pick up because I believe the quarter wing actually braise finishes in this corner as well. So if I, if I lay some braise in there, when we come to excuse me when we come to fit the quarter we've got braids to pick up on as well so just because it's a, a water trap i'm going to inlay that now so get the oxy on and just fill any low level areas with braids then then croc sand it down bearing in mind not to put too much braids near the area where the spot welds are going to go so just finish down below where my finger is so that will complete that repair for the b pill there and give it a bit more of a waterproof finish Rather than skimming over that, we'll get it filled. So it should do it. Then there's a little hole down the bottom to do, and then I think that's it. We're done for the B pillar repairs. So oxyacetylene next for me, and a braze fill. And just before I start the braze, oh, a goodie box arrives from Ian from Patreon. Ian, you know who you are. You're out there. A goodie box from Ian. He's raided the stores. New gloves, overalls. Safety gloves, safety the number one priority, and look, nice hand cream there from Deb, a good company, reliable company, some beautiful cutting discs, some tech screws, cutting compound when we're doing all them spot welds, <laughs> safety goggles Ian, it's Christmas early, I can't thank you enough, thought I'd give you a mention there, uh, my goodie box arrived, so appreciate it. What can I do? Make sure I get you some metal when I see you. Hope you can make the NEC. So, uh, yeah, on with the welding rods now. We take out the preflux rods and we get the phrase in. In fact, we've already got one ready to go. So, goodie box. Thank you, Ian, for that. Let's braise. Here's the porter pack, just an oxyacetylene setup. Quick uh, release tap, check our pressure, and we're good to go. Oxy on. Get a little, uh, we just need one of them flint lighters. Keep trying to get one. It's dangerous with a, with a cigarette lighter. Gotta get a flint lighter. Braze. Okay, so there you see the braze is nicely laid in over the patch and our oval just wants slightly overly cutting out but uh, a little bit more just at the bottom now to go in and uh, we, we're good there we're ready to rock just where it joins in that little lip and I'll be careful not to put any in where the spot weld's gonna go a little bit more braze and we're done with the braze overlaid we're now ready to shape that with crocky and get it all nice and flush as one continuous run so we should be quite uh, watertight there and rust proof so we just sand that and profile that up and that's that little bit done okay that's it nicely blended in just run the crocky over and you see how the the braise just becomes flush where that patch was slightly let in and then from the back we are nice and clean as well so there we go we can move on from that repair I'll still skim that because it'll never be exactly flush for paint so I'm just gonna do a little hole there slight little repair on a cut line that was overcut and that's it for the bead pill we can start getting it prepped with the weld through then we can put it back into the car we're going we're going to fix that area you can just see it coming in now, this area, just behind that pillar. How far will the camera zoom? You can just see right in the middle of your screen some pinholes which want to, the MIG on with the copper plate at the back. Then clean, get a wire brush in there, clean that up and get that uh, rust proofed. Moving on, B-pillar repair, going as steadily as we can. Okay, just on that B-pillar pit hole repair copper bar at the back I'll just show you the copper bar in case you've not seen it it's a piece of copper flat bar clamped on with my um, quick clamps there 
and just squeeze it right tied up so that when you weld now these pit holes pin holes it gives it a solid paint base at the back weld doesn't stick to the copper so you can take the copper off and it leaves it unattached and it helps you um, repair pin holes without blowing through and making a mess so we just cleaned it up we put some in there and now that's nearly gone there's one more to do just at the bottom of it it's a little bit thin round there we can only just get the copper bar into it so we may struggle with that one but I can live with it uh, we've got most of them we've come the way down so B pillar's nearly fixed and getting prepped up and ready we're almost there Okay, the pin holes are now gone and we're ready to paint that. It looks like this pin holes are, it's not, it's just where the other the weld was actually. We've put the torch on it. You can just see, ah, I can just see two more. There's one there and one there. So we'll run over that now. Nearly done though. May as well get them all up. It's amazing how little tiny miniature ones show up. Just there. I'll we'll just put another tack on, not a tack, but just another weld over and we're done may as well get the whole lot so that's that that repairs almost finished and we're ready to clamp the b-pillar into position and get the spot welder on it after we put the weld through on this run then we can seam weld across here we'll clean that uh, metal up just a little bit seam it across and it's joined in a stagger join nice and strong okay i've i've mixed my um rust buster two pack well through I'm now just going to take that down off we go nothing better than putting a bit of paint on away we go on all the faces to be welded as we usually do there's no harm in going over the whole lot but I'm not going to just round the area where there's going to be a lot of heat up here where you get this this continuous seam weld we're going to be getting so We'll try and get that and we're also going to be going up with a spray gun on a nozzle and pulling the primer through and we're also going to be going up on a spray gun on a nozzle with the um the rust, the rust proofing material the dinner trial so preparing the faces for the spot weld and for the seam weld just there okay okay with the b pillar prepped and ready with its primer we can now offer it up to the the cut areas that we made we've got the repairs on the pinholes done nothing to stop us putting this back together and getting on with the inner sill now because it was always this b pillar that was stopping us from continuing with the sill run it needed to be there and, and ready to go so i'm going to offer it up clamp it in position and we're going to choose the appropriate spot weld arms and then run the spot welder down it and then we'll do the seam weld at the top we're using the this little locating tang to get it in exactly the right place both tangs go together the same we can check that's the, the case off this side that's untouched and you'll see that the tang indicates two pieces of metal in line with each other I have noticed some on Cortina builds where those tangs are, are a mill a mill uh, not together if you know what I mean a mill under or a mill out of position where they must just throw them together tolerance is not being as tight I think at around one to two mil you can get away with most things on the Cortina but we're going to line them exactly up because that's how uh, they came off so um, off we go to clamp up B pillar now ladies and gentlemen and we're moving on
sorry, I hit the stop button then. 63.2 across, 63.2 there. To get that 63.2, I am just slightly under tension. When I let it uh, roll back, it's 63.3. But when we put the brace in, which I just did, and you clamp it up to the brace, it draws it back into that. Same on the uh, other side as well, that's applied when we did it. 112 on my door openings, getting readings of 111 and a half, 112 and a half on some of the other cars that I've measured from uh, door edge by the door light switch, curtsy light switch, across to the corresponding level position, 112, which tells me that the B pillar is correct in the way relation on the way it sits because you could push that back you could pull it forward but we are guided by the lip here and we see that we're indeed closed up we did do this cut so that it, so that it closed not so that it had a mill gap um, I think anyway if I did have it where it was a mill gap then this would be pushing the sill is pushing it up however that can't be the case because I'm getting 89.5 um, in the corner I've chopped that bit off there where I had that uh, and 87.5 in the centre up to where you find that you left your marks your 87.5 mark here on the corner going down I think on that side it is I don't know if that's the same I'm going to check in a sec so measuring from the sill up to the roof and measuring across from the middle of the B pillar across to there. I also do perpendicular uh, cross from this corner 105s perpendiculars, no not perpendiculars, diagonals across which are coming in to 2 mil compared to the other side. Uh, so really that is it. All the measurements fall into place where it is now. Curiously, it seems that this is now slightly forward of the B pillar, but I think that's because when I've stripped the B pillar, I've bent it back because there is no back fixing on the B pillar, it's only fixed on the front. So you can actually get the B pillar and draw it round, it'll have probably a lateral twist in it when it's been stripped. So that would be pulled to meet that right angle of the wing. But the wing's actually dented anyway, and don't forget, this is the Migdon wing. You can see the MIG lines along here where it normally would be spot welded and uh, the mess here at the back. That's a new wing, that would be spot welded. Look where you can see the MIG weld, not bad MIG welds. It's not a botch job. So what I'm saying is the name of the game before we secure the B pillar in its final place. There isn't really anywhere else it could have gone because we left this backing plate on. We didn't alter this backing plate. It's not moved. It's braced by these inner braces here. They've not moved. We knew that it was flush more or less to a mill. Just looked at one outside and that's indeed got a little overhang there. Just like this one has. And even that has a little overhang recess. Just like this one. Although that side doesn't. So there is a bit of play. And that might be one of the reasons for it had problems with door shuts and door gaps and things because the tolerance levels perhaps weren't as um, vigilant as it is when you, you're doing your own restoration where you, you're on top of it. I mean, obviously these cars are going down a production line. It could be that pressings were different as well. You don't know. I mean, I'm sure that the assembly workers did a good job with what they had and uh, it's just the way that things vary. All in all, when you look at the build, to have these couple of mil specs is nothing to worry about, perhaps uh, too much. Although it's nice to try and get some symmetry, which is what I like to do, even if it's out by two mil, I'd like it to be out the same on both sides, simply because I just like things to be even, just the way, it, the way my brain is. Okay, um, by the way, just in case you do pick up any real observant people, the, the measurements on the transmission tunnel will vary because this side not symmetrical with that side it's actually um, a less distance because of the way the automatic transmission aperture is um, stamped out of that plate so double checking double checking and it is looking good in terms of our floor if you look our floor there meets the sill 
more or less flush there is a bend in the floor just about here so i'm going to push down when i fit it then it comes back in true up this end so the floor's got to warp around halfway a bow in it but that floor's been stored pushed around pulled around welded migged of course but it's not a problem to just apply some force to it you could even use your foot if you wanted and just push down if you could manage to get the clamp on which i could if i didn't have the camera in my right hand now i'd be able to just push that into position and clamp it you can see it flexing now and pushing on it so that will give us a little bit of tension which is quite a good thing to have to have it and don't forget about the idea where when we put the cross member piece in there it is flip side up we're going to jack strap round both the sills with a ratchet strap and draw them quite tight up to that cross member um, bearing in mind our uh, gap measurements across from sill to sill which I seem to remember was being 630 Point four or something like 136 but oh what was it now it's written we've got to go around that side and have a look and just re refresh ourselves before we get the spot welder out and do the bead pillar uh, what, uh, what was it what the 136.4 so one meter 36.4 I think we we can get that now I have drawn, drawn that in you can see where I had the strap round it just before I took that side off to see if the principle of jack strapping ratchet strapping the sills towards each other worked and it does you're only talking about getting that last two mil and bringing it nice and tightly against the cross members both of them by the way not just the the seat uh, cross member but also the back seat cross member not fitted here because we've got to get it we need a new one but we've got one sorted don't worry and then just um strap the car up and then weld them in position and it just puts a little bit of tension in the shell which i think is a good thing everything else comes in nice 111.5 this side so you've got that five mil difference between the apertures but that's how the car came in now you could argue perhaps because it was shunted um did one side slightly move however when i look at other court scenes i find variants i've not seen five mil i've seen a four mil variant on gaps with cars that have not known to have any accidents or rebuilds indeed um, my green car being one of them and um, the uh, the Cortina estate being the other so we're always checking and double checking all the time with this and not get complacent with it to make sure that things follow as they should and in fact there's our uh, sill to roof at 88 so a five mil variant there on what we had when the car came in we will probably get that i'm just going to go back again and check that i have got 87.5 i seem to remember that i have yeah i've written it down on both that's today's reading and that was the original reading um you could correct it to 88 you could pull up you see how i can pull the sill and slightly weld it uh, higher on the inner sill edge which would hold, hold it in position or you could loosen the sill at the bottom and bring it up a little bit if you want to as far as you can get away with the B pillar fittings but you don't want a bow in the middle of the sill to get just to, for the sake of that you really want the sill to lay lay nice and flat rather than trying to uh, get that OCD millimetre thing you really want to be looking at the actual final product because no one's ever going to know about that but what they would know about is if you try to get closer tolerances at the cost of um, warping the sill you know by doing this you don't want to you really just got to make your decision and this is the time to do it the B pillar sits there and there's not much to stop me now from fixing it I don't need to worry that the repair I made at the bottom of the B pillar is uh, pushing on the sill in any way indeed it's not we look down where the wing meets the sill and you'll note on a two door that they have a a, uh, a folded edge and the sill fits the wing fits over the sill like that with virtually no gap so that just if you can hear it it's just going in now if that was way out 
you'd not get that. I know there's not much of it left here, um, but it could be that when I come to fit the wing that we have problems with this piece. We just don't know yet. Uh, if it did, you could slit it, you could alter it, but that could be a potential problem in the future, even though I'm pretty much convinced that the sill is lying in its correct place. It wouldn't take much to get this sill slightly higher at this end and off the level <clears throat> because unfortunately for this end I haven't any reference points and there's nothing left to reference to so we're, we're hoping that the beef pillar is going to give us the height because this could kick this really could kick so what I'm going to do I'm going to double check um, these measurements and just make sure that I'm not pushing up into this quarter because that would be dangerous if we did so in other words what I'm saying is this B pillar could come down another 2 mil if it wanted which would open this up to a 2 mil butt weld gap I'm going to have to refer back to my video I'm almost sure the blade went through both pieces leaving a blade thickness there and at the moment I'm closed up telling me that the B pillar is pushed up too high and it needs to come down that could be a possibility we need to make sure that was the case so it's time to refer to my material I can't remember what happened with that and the 89.5 here to there is coming in if I push the sill down that and then opens up to 89.7 I need to go and check uh, the other side and just see so what basically what I'm saying is I'm just gonna throw it one way throw it the other way get the best compromise between everything that we've got um, symmetrical wise actual finished door aperture wise stuff like that we need to make sure we get this bit exactly right it's a shame I didn't put some kind of marker just here except to say that I used these and it's really okay looking like only a mil too high which would explain the angle grinder so I'm tempted to drop down and line that perfectly up and accept that this drifts a little bit to 0 0.6, 0 0.7. I'd rather that because that would give us a little bit more play here. I'm feeling that that's a bit tight and that by the time we put another wing on there, could be struggling. I'm trying to see on the camera if you can see, but it's unfortunately this has been damaged with the rock so we can't be sure that this lower wing edge is actually in its correct position I mean I would presume where that rust is there the camera lighting is a bit low see we seem to be a bit close for this wing to sill gap I want to make sure that's a very visible gap line so it's very important we need to make sure this is right Okay, I'm going to go back and make some other checks, but I'm just explaining to you the procedure here to make sure that we get it right. Okay, bear with me, YouTubers and Patreons, thanks for your patience here while we explain you through this. And suffice to say, I'm eager to carry on going and get this underway, but I don't want to rush it. Okay, give me a five minute break to make some video checks. I found another good reference point. These parts haven't moved, sorry for the fast zoom, these parts haven't moved, 17 to the bottom of the sill and then back braces for the door cards, both sides 17, both sills, so we're okay, we've reached equilibrium and now the spot weld has been fired up, we're going to do a couple more down here, I'll let you see that and then let me get on and spot weld, B pillar spot weld.
the fun of the fur is down this end, the spot welds are in, you just saw that, a boom. And now, there, get them clamps on there and get this nicely clamped up ready for the weld. When we set it all up, it does actually reveal a little bit of an infill cut for us to do, which is what we want. So we're flush, flush, feeling smooth there. We're ready to put a, a runner weld on that. And uh, we'll get going and do that now. Just set the welder on. I think I go for position two on the welder. Here's our front end of the welder there. So we're going to set that up and get a, a butt weld in. Remove the clamps and go all the way round and grind it back. I'll, uh, I'll film this little bit, some requests for some welding footage. So we're crammed in the corner here. I'm going to move the car out and give us a little bit more room. We are crammed in. Sit back and enjoy some welding now. B pillar welding. Okay, I'm welded, ready to grind back. Then we're getting solid. Grinding back time now, weld is on. Okay, ground down and filled. Ready to go. All right, I'll need a little bit of filler in that, I suppose. You can just feel a ridge. Don't know if I file anymore in case I file through the metal, but tough, strong and done. Big pillar, welded on. Next is the dark in the A. Uh, sorry, the inner sill. Hang on. You can hear me better now. Welder off. Inner sill next, then. Prep the inner sill and start getting it ready to fit. Let's see how it fits first. We'll mock it up. So, just tight in the corner here, we could do with making ourselves some room. I think that's the next mission for tomorrow is to clear some space in there. We're not messy, but we're just a bit tight in the corner here. Could flip the car the other way round, of course, and put the front end in first. Quite possible, but I've just about got enough room. I can, I can manage here. Uh, time to vac the floor so we're not in all the dust. Pretty much happy with the B pillar. So it's, it's inner sill next on this uh, near side. Inner sill coming up. We'll drag it out. I think it's just under there, poking through. Needs some prepping, sanding down. It wants some prime and paint and some usual. Our good old trusty weld through primer. We can start spot welding it in position, same as we did that side, and then finally get that sill on, and then we're done up to halfway. We can start on the roof after then. Okay, let me clean up the inner sill. I'll get it out for you and show you what we've got, and we'll mock fit it first. Outer sill off now, we've got that B pillar sorted. Great stuff, going well, enjoying it as well. Hope you are too. I'm having a good time. True rail fit. The sill is good. Nice. Just kind of like finds its way in. Clip up. Clip up. Follows the floor good. Everything's just in line. So we're good with the sill. So now we can clean, clean it all up. Get the wire wheel on that. And then I'll prime it. And get it into our Ford primer and the weld through primers, of course. Losing my voice today. Okay, here we are. Take this off now, we know it's all, all all right. There's nothing major needs modifying and we shall clean up both edges. Away we go. A little bit of Diana Ross helping us through the night shift. You're still with me. We cleaned up the, shop blasted the inner sill. That was the, this is an original Ford one. So I took it out today and shot blasted, local shot blasters. Give it a bit of a clean down and shot blast. And now 
what we do we mask off the areas where the weld through is going to go because we don't want to put this is etch prime on first then 182 then the then the um the techno grip paint but we don't want to have uh, any paint other than bare, we don't have anything other than bare metal underneath the rust busting primer so for that reason i mask off the proposed welding area of this sill both sides then when that's done we're now going to apply some more paint we finished with the brown prime as you've seen on the other side and the other panels that we've done <coughs> keeping it consistent so i'm going to load the gun and get some more paint on these and then um, we'll get it ready and then once we've done that we'll peel off the masking tape and then just apply reapply it lower down once the final primer paint uh, final coat of paint has cured otherwise we'll be peeling it off when we pull off the masking tape so we just wait between those coats in a nutshell we're prepping the sill in its paint scheme getting ready i'll cut straight to this being fully painted now because we just want to compress the time scale you've seen it on the the driver's side, the offside, so much of the same procedure. All right, maybe a quick flick of the gun going on. All right, paint time. Okay, okay, final paint on. I just realised I've done this side differently. Not that it's a problem, it'll work out just the same, but I didn't paint this side. Did I? I was going to paint it after. It doesn't really matter. Um, makes no odds. There are some areas on this which I don't exactly know where they're going to line up for the cross members to meet, but what we'll do is take, we'll just sand the paint off there and then put the weld through on when we know the exact position. So there's a few little alterations to do in terms of the paint, but it's best just to get some paint on anyway. No harm in just putting that on. If you scratch it off or scratch it or anything like that, it doesn't really make a lot of difference. Don't forget we've got seam sealer going on the seat belt anchoring bolt and also on the jacking point at the rear. So the seam sealer will repaint over the seam sealer. And of course, we'll be seam sealing the jacking point at the front. We haven't done this one yet. Because we're not finished, we had to add that extra bracket if you recall. There it is, there's the extra reinforcing bracket which curiously doesn't come with the Ford sill yet, is fitted by Ford later on. Okay, so that's the score with that. I'm now going to let that paint cure for a while. Actually, it's, it's evening time now, so I'll actually give it a break and drop back on this tomorrow because I've got some editing to do. So, I've got a jungle juffle. Jungle, jiffle, jiffle, jungle, jack, what? Shuffle, juggle me time around because the time is precious and you've got to manage it. I'm just about manage to manage it. Right, I'll be back when this is done. I forgot to mention before I go, retire for the evening, let the paint go for tomorrow. Hello, it is. Technogrips, fast to dry. Um, Anti-vibration gloves, look. Okay, scary stuff. The anti-vibration gloves coming at you. Um, and also, some better quality ear protectors. These are Moldex. Better quality, better built. Don't get the Stanley ones, or if you, if you, well, get them, they're better than nothing, but these are just slightly better. And yellow are easy to find because I'm telling you, I mean, even though my Stanley ones were, were red, they're so difficult. You just, I don't uh, you need a cigarette lighter, seeing that I don't smoke, but you always lose cigarette lighters, biros, and ear defenders. So far, that's on my list of things that you just, where the hell are they, things? Anyway, some good air defenders there. Right, I'm going to go in and do some editing. I'll be back on the car tomorrow. For you, it's only a few minutes. Time warp. Happy with the 
so fit we then go for the weld through as promised mask off where we painted brown sand back to clean metal well we've already got clean metal because we masked off when we painted the Ford brown but just in case any bits we miss we make sure we've got a run masking tape on and then we peel back to give us our line best with the can it's not a master class just to get something like right and there we go so we just reveal our weld through lines on the sill so we get we got brown on the inside of course when you look if you ever to look on the inside it's just well coated as well both sides done peel off masking tape both sides then I can slot this in then get it ready to spot well onto the floor edge floor edge is painted so we can get the the, uh, the curved we'll use the curved spot weld arms and then we'll get in we'll get the clamps on this do our measurements check 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 and then we're ready to weld it okay I've gone off of this up to the car now I want to pull off the masking tape this uh, weld through dries really quick good stuff the u poles also good this is a little bit more flexible this another thing while we're on talking about chemicals you may remember I prepped up these we acid dipped these floor uh, floor for the seat mount bolts for the floor pan and also a jacking point front coming out of the tub now these were um, dipped and then what you'll find when you dip them is they soon rust over like in a day but you then get this phosphate clean I'll take you over to it now slowly we go across to the paint bench this is Foss Clean B great stuff from Rust Buster again and this washes down any mucky metal we tied a little patch on the wing couldn't kind of take you over to the wing you see this wing was dipped and you do get that sort of tarnishing effect already then you put the Foss Clean on you clean it back to back to clean metal again we've done it up here on the door pillar as well just to see if you look at that door pillar, that B pillar, original colour is the roof colour, with the Foss Clean, it washes it back and then seals the surface, stop it flashing. We've done it as well on the A pillar there. That's been cleaned down with this stuff. It's great. I'll give you a demo of it live later on when we could prepare the rest of the floor bolt mounting plates. But just while it was in my mind, the Foss Clean B, great. So that's a handy one. If you've got rusty metal that you've just acid dipped, you pop it in to the Foss Clean and it washes it and it seals it. It's ready for it. Oh, you can paint your primer straight onto that. In fact, if you read what we got, removes rust and aluminium phosphates, leaves steel in a grey overpaintable iron phosphate finish. And for keen viewers out there, how keen are you? Do you pick up any of the clues in the the YouTube f uh, the YouTube thumbnails? If you looked at 15, you'd have seen the chemical. Uh, what do they call it? The atomic structure, the chemical structure for phosphorus. Uh, in the atomic table chart, it's number 15 on the. Uh, what do you call that? Is it the periodic table? It's number 15. So episode 15 got the atom of phosphorus. Not everyone gets it. There's tarot cards in there for episode 11 because the strength card is episode 11. There's loads. There's loads of little Easter eggs in the thumbnails. You have to watch out for those. Okay, I'm going to get this fitted. Right, all the clamps are on. And what we're going for is flush fit with the floor pan lower lip. You can't quite see it here, and I'll take the camera under. A little bit of camera trickery if I don't. See me, and then the lower lip flush with the sill. Just see that there. So that's what you're looking for. 
we've got various clamps along the bottom edge. It's the bottom edge that's important at the moment. We don't secure to the B pillar and we don't secure to the A pillar yet. The floor is pushing up. If you, if you look at where that is on the B pillar, it's a bit high, but <clears throat> as soon as you just put a little bit of weight, it lines it back up. That's because there's a twist in the floor pan, just the way that it's gone in. I would say that it's just got a curl on it by about a centimetre. There's nothing when you just press it, so that's not a problem. We use the jack if we have to here on a block of wood, and that assists us in pushing up any high areas or low, low areas there, and then compress it and then lock on. So I'm getting ready for the first run of spot welds to get this locked in, and then once we've done that, we can get the sill and um, prime the edges of that with weld through and paint the inside of the sill in the Ford brown as well and then we've got it we're done we can then start completing this side first job for me now is to get the spot welder loaded up with the, the curved spot welder arms and then do a run along here it gets just every other space in because we come back when we weld the sill on and go through all three sections of metal so that would be your your floor edge lip, the inside with the inner sill, and the outside being the outer part of the outer sill. And that would pinch all three together. Quite crucial that we get these spot welds here. It's a very, very structural place, so we want to make sure the metal was very clean, the weld through was on, and everything's clean. And all under the faces of the A pillar and under the faces of the B are clean and primed as well. Everything's really ready now for the spot welder to come in. We'll just go around the other side and double check just in case I may have missed anything. We'll do some checks. We look at the front locating tab ready to bend down and lock over that. This rib fitting nicely into there. We're slotted underneath the bottom of here. And we've got our pin on as well to make sure that we're in line with the jacking point so that we can withdraw that without too much effort and you can see it's quite neatly tight up against it which lands exactly at the bottom of there so more or less we're right if we find that there's a little bit of resistance here we can always just uh, sand out a little bit of metal to make this easier we're not locked rigid we're quite tight so we'll keep our eye on that bit make sure that it's right we could go up just a little bit more at this end perhaps we could get the jack and just raise that so that's a little bit freer we'd also take this tab a little bit higher where it needs to be but we're pretty much on the limit approaching it there see more or less we're in the right area you can see how that bar works there okay so that's it for now for that we can actually tension it up as well if we want if you watch you'll see the movement and that will tension itself in indeed spring in the floor at the same time have a look you can see the entire twist in it. This is where it's quite critical. We did well on the other side, and we'll do well this side. This is how we can address this if we want. The clamps can go here. I push up with my knee, and then we would now lock there, putting that under a little bit of tension, but making this jacking point bar go in and out quite nicely. So that's to watch when we come up the centre weld. Brings the floor up a little bit, as we would want it to. And just puts a little bit of a tension in the shell. Spot weld the next then please. Here's a tip for you all to speak loud so that radio don't pick up otherwise I have to keep going to the radio turning it down to film. <laughs> right get your crocky and sand the inner edge of the floor all right not this side of course but there's a there's a gal a type of gal finish on the floor pan and the spot welder doesn't like it so run your uh, sander down the back so it's very clean metal you get a lot better weld if you do that there's one in now it's hit nice look at that okay so the tusks are on the spot welder there our oh, beauty so we're going to put a few in and i'll stick you on the tripod for a bit of spot welding fun just get a few to hold it and i can remove the clamps and make a complete run down there okay push it real good let's go okay low level this time for you at home in YouTube land. Just got a couple in spot weld wise. Now we lift. Can we do a few more? Beautiful. 
I'll send you nicely. Oh yeah. What I found is just take uh, a little bit of paint off. It just gets a better quality wild through. I've, I've tried both types of wild through primer, but this spot well it just likes it a little bit cleaner. We've still got it on the inside layer, but maybe two or three layers of uh, spot weld prime weld through paint it, it, to spot weld the car quite do the business but um, it's not really a big deal because we've got plenty of paint we can put over it continuing on just coming to the left of your screen for the final run it's been fun boom oh. boom boom yeah, I like it. You like a spot well now and again. Right, we're just going along the inner sill first. And don't forget the outer sill also welds through. If we have problems with the outer sill not wanting to weld through confidently with a spot welder, we will plug weld it on. It's too important to take a risk, so we'll see. The other side went through all right, but we'll see. It should be okay. I'll continue down this run now for you. Then I'll start offering the outer sill up just to see how we're fitting downtown. Hell yeah! <laughs> Woo! Woohoohoo! I like it. excited about the spot weld. Boom! Okay. That's that side done. Why am I slightly out of breath? Well, not out, not out of breath. Spot weld's a bit heavy, that's all. We now get the sill. Not yet final fitting, but a trial fit first. Then prep the inside of the sill, our usual paint scheme. Then in, and then I think, can you think of any reason why we can't fit it? I think we'll be okay. So, that's gone well. Everything's through. They're really good welds, by the way, on here. I really feel the quality of them. So, confident about that. Uh, yeah. I'll just carry on with the spot welding, carry on with the sill. Here we go. Let's try the sill fit. Okay, I'm on with trial fit of the sill, and I'm really happy with it. Drawing it all in together. Whoops, there's the magnet again. Okay, you see a little dip down there, but it's the same on the other side. So, we're okay, and we're flush up against here. And everything looks right over there where it should be and we're good on the bottom edge it likes to have a little bit of tension so when we fit the bottom we'll just curl just a little bit underneath the sill just to tension it up but if you see how it closes up there's a little wave but then again that is factory you never get these completely parallel that's just perfectly acceptable b pillar fits slots in and it looks like the wing's gonna fit look at that that difficult area of the wing this bent metal here try and imagine that so we're gonna be okay if you can see it's gonna fit in there so i think we've done good it might not be exactly the same as the factory but i don't think it won't be far off so trial fit is i'm happy with that we'll go on the other side of the car now hold on and in this side to see how it looks on the inner run everything's in line no gaps and then repairs that we've done to that front lower bulkhead as well following down nicely floor edge all parallel and straight and meeting in that corner i'll zoom you in don't often do the zoom flush with the the way that it fits in that corner everything's fitting in as it should we're landing by the wheel tub in the right way and this is nice and straight across there so that's it trial fit now the real deal let's get it on prep it up and get it spot welded on then we're on and then we'll mark any areas that we don't weld because obviously the wheel tubs have to slot into the background that area we want to leave a little bit of uh, welds undone and then we'll tighten them up when the tubs uh, get their, their tension so that's down to the the back end so we're not going to do too many welds just towards the rear of that cross member that fits along there but the rest of it can go the same as we did this side okay so sill off now after the trial fit prep sill and offer it up get some welds in 
and then it's uh, even more strength in the car okay once we get up to this area we'll put a little bit of paint down we can we can seam in there if we want as well with the seam sealer and we can finish the cross members and the, the seat bolts for the passenger side remember we did these in episode 15 so we'll mark out the exact we'll get the seat in we'll mark out the exact position get the seat bolts seat bolt brackets in and then we can dress this area clean it all up we can paint it if we want so that it looks all completed and then really we've done the floor and we're up to the roof then we can move on uh, up to the roof and start repairing that and we're gonna we're gonna take a break then at that point it'll be the NEC then in March in fact that's probably past no I don't know if that's yeah no well by the time you see this it's probably past but I'll have it done by then so when you see this when you've seen it at the NEC no doubt you'll have seen a bit more completion work here I'm getting a bit mixed up with times here and it's all a bit of a time warp in here okay that's it for this evening for me for you it's only a couple of seconds <laughs> Okay, this sill is painted, plucked and ready for the pot. Uh, we got well through there using the U-Pol on this, just because I think it's a thinner paint and because we've got to go through three layers of metal on the lower edges, I just thought I don't want to build up that red stuff's really good, this stuff down in the pot there. But the U-Pol, it's tried and tested as well. Um, I think they're both, they've both got their own individual pros and cons. Uh, for this uh, sill run we go UPOL. Well, we'll just remind you what that is in case you've missed it. It's good stuff, smells good too. UPOL weld too. Okay, so that went on. Then we, we masked off. Then put the the, uh, the rust proofing paint on. And then we finished it with, I've done this before, but Techno Grip, a Lecla paint. I know we keep showing you that leaflet. It's good stuff, very durable, and it says ink based as well. It's a final coat, non porous, so we're good to go. Brown on then, Ford's brown, and now I take the sill along and clamp it up into place, then run the spot welder in the various locations, and hopefully, let's fingers crossed that we can get through all three layers of metal on the spots. I did it on the other side, so I can't see any reason why it won't work this side. The only reason I've got doubts is I was struggling with the sill, uh, inner sill, last night. But I think because I had the welder in on an extension cable, I think it weren't getting enough current. So we'll run straight onto the, the ring main. So don't run them off the extension leads. I think that's not a good idea. Um, if you are running heavy current off an extension lead, always fully uncoil it. You know, otherwise it acts as a magnet, magnetic coil and heats up and can um, burn out especially on heavy loads. Well through primer, spot welder plugged into the ring main and clamps and off we go for Phil Sitman. <laughs> Phil, no, I got it wrong, I've done it again. Sil fitment, near side, thank you. A small detailing thing, just remind, remind you that your seam seal, the brackets, the jacking point at the back and then the seatbelt bracket there just to stop uh, moisture getting behind it's just a little bit of an improvement some seam seal before we go on with the sill forgot to mention that getting ready to line it up now sills just down here the other areas where it's going to get plug welded using the pink coloured weld through because that can take puddle welding a bit better than the UPOL can ready to offer up now for you here we go sill fitting now
Okay, so we're in there. Just nicely clipped in. All I've got to do really now is get all the clamps on. Then what we'll do, each spot weld that I go along here, I'll just run the sander. What we're going to call it today. Run the sander, power file, bang for each one. Save them to strip all the paint off on that run. It's actually a good paint finish on this. Um, but it's, it's coming off again <clears throat> anyway. So I'm going to clamp that up. We're ready to go. Then it's this beast. The beast is back. Bit of, bit of weight lifting. So we'll just do a double check. There's a little dimple just at the bottom of the A pillar that lines up. There's a little recess just at the end of the A pillar here. And it kind of like just drops in the flush with it, which is quite nice. So that's what we use for the reference, really. And also we make sure that there may be a slight difference here in the back where you can go a mill or two left or right. We look at the way that it meets the uh, arch at the back against the wheel tub. The wheel tub comes in, the back of the sill has a little plate on it. And it they just touch together like that. And that should, in theory, line up with the dimple here and the recess there and that's it now on the other side i drilled spot welds i drilled uh, holes out ready for the plugs in this a pillar already but what i found when i was doing it is it was bending the edges of the pillar a little bit what i'm going to do on this side i'm going to pilot them and then i'm going to use my hole cutter to go in and it'll just leave little discs which will hook out i've got a little magnet there if they try, if they try and slip we can hook them out so it's just a little bit more solid then when i'm drilling into the a pillar I've got the strength of the sill lip behind it um, because as I said when I was drilling these edges because right on the edge the drill was bending the metal it was difficult to actually when the punch would be better you know and we'll do the same on the B and the A pillar later on when it's spot welded in our pilot with a three mil drill bit then use a little hole cutting spot weld cutter to actually make the plug weld holes for here because we can't get the spot welder into this bit it has to be plugged you'd see that in the earlier videos when we did the sill the other side so that's about it we're ready once it's on it's on i mean i'm probably over worrying about it but um you know just get it on there you know okay we'll cut straight to the boom let's go Okay, just a tip on spot welding before we start. Well, I've done a couple already. Make sure your probes are clean. I'm going to bring these probes up to the camera then so you can see. These are um, sort of like tusks. And they reach in and just curl round. Now, you have to keep reshaping them because they do wear down for a lot of use. So I just use the power file today and croc sander tomorrow to get them clean and then to get the shape of spot weld a nice round shape at the end of each uh, probe and then I like to test it as well and just make sure it's doing what it should so two pieces of metal and I'll just do a test I'll put two on it and try and break it and we'll have a look at them that's what we're going to be we're getting when they're on the car so they're pretty good and then we try and break it, shouldn't really be able to get this apart. So once you build them up, I mean, we can keep on going, we'll get them, but it's talk. We can rock them if you want, you'll get it. But that's the kind of thing you're looking at. So just before I start on the sill run, a little uh, thing on the end of the probes there. There's probably better ways than I'm doing it, perhaps. Spot welding is something I'm still learning, along with normal welding. But this seems to work, it gives a good finish, and we're ready to move on. I'll move the camera inside the car so that you can get a little view of a few of the spot welds going down on the top sill lip edge first, and then we'll put a little bit of tension into the sill, and then get the bottom edge. Hopefully it'll go through those three pieces of metal. Let's try it. Okay, join me on a little bit of the sill run across here now. I'm just taking my head right down so you can get in. Uh, I will get the power file, clean the edge of each side. You may as well, there's no point going through any more paint than we have to. So 
dropping one side of the sill, the other side between that, as you know, is the uh, weld through. So a buzz down and a spot weld and we'll just work away along. Let's try some. We'll start here. Let's do one there now. I'm going to bring the light in so it's even a bit better for it. Even better for it. Okay. Buzz down. Try it going in. You heard the high current noise then, which meant it's it's a success. That's our first in, so a couple more for you. Let's turn the time up one little bit more. So stay on with me in YouTube and Patreon land. Get on that Patreon. Please help us, help us, help us. Okay, we're in luck. The weld has gone through all three pieces of metal, no problem. In fact, it just went straight through it. So, I've got one fixing on, and I'm just making sure now that the edge of the sill goes flush with the floor pan. This requires just a little bit, two mil jack up. So we've got the jack under the, the sill, and we, we compress it up till it meets the edge. Didn't need a lot, but just enough. You can see it now highlighted in grey there. We can come down a little bit, watch. As I release the tension on the jack, you'll see the gap change and close up just there where we want it. You see that? This gives us the parallel. It's actually just pushing on the floor and the sill combined. And the block of wood brings the two pieces of metal together. So you get that effect, which is what we want. It's acceptable for it to drift out a little bit because they all do the meeting faces on the Ford cars but we wanted it somewhere nicely flushed together so now what we do we get the crock sander on there take that paint off I've already done all the back so you only got to do one side then the jaws will get in there of the spot welder or we can clamp it if the jack's in the way clamp there and come in from that side to the right of your screen and then we can get that nipped in and we just do one in the end one in the middle and one at the other end and that gets it the floor pan then infill between the gaps okay so the good news is the welder goes straight through all three pieces of metal which means we don't have to plug weld and we'll get nice spot weld finishes here you can always reinforce with plug welds between the spots if you want if you're not confident about it but all this metal is very clean and new and it's got weld through on it there's no reason why we shouldn't be getting the professional result that we want okay so I'm going to clamp this Going to use those locking pliers there, they're just better suited for that edge. There they are, because they can nip in. And then I'll drop the jack down so I can come in from the right with the spot welder. Let's put a spot on to that now and work our way through this lower edge because we can do it. We've already established that there's no disadvantage fixing it now at the bottom regarding door gap. It doesn't affect it. Okay, I shall continue on with this exciting part of this build on this side. Really looking forward to seeing this coming together. Exciting stuff. Let's go. Join me then at ground level. But you fed up this belt well then. Who can ever get bored of that buzzing sound? The newt doesn't. The newtster doesn't. Boom! Thank you.
lovely and coming out a really nice circular shape i do like the pattern on them yeah oh, oh, oh. very very good now i'm gonna do the cocky won't quite get into the profile so i'm gonna hand sand this one for you it's not a problem A little bit of elbow grease won't do you no harm. Yeah. Just taking the, the, the Ford paint off. Not the paint I put on, I didn't paint it, just the paint from the new old stock panel. That welder needs really clean and it helps as I said with the cleaning of the welding tips the spot welding tips and shaping them as well because they do distort back in the game so only a few more to go and we're done on this so I'm really pleased that they're going through so nicely. I thought it might struggle with the three layers. Beautiful. Oh. Yeah. it I think. Our spot weld has successfully fitted the sill really solid. Wow how exciting is that? Looking in under that light so oh now you might think why is it so exciting just it just because you just get immediate closure of the job. Yeah wow thank you Okay, ready to weld the A-pillar in and the technique for making these plug weld holes if you remember, I managed to grind out the metal from the back so it didn't leave any uh, spot weld drill holes in this it's because some of them were right close to the edge and it's harder to recreate that nice flush edge if you drill out some of the factory welds, they break that edge away then you've got to try and recreate a nice clean edge to your A-post so I pilot them out, then we use the hole cutter, uh, spot weld cutter bit, which you've seen on previous videos, our friend there. And then what happens, you get a nice little biscuit that pops out, leaving you the perfect place to plug weld. And because we've already primed it, the primer's there and everything's ready to go. So what we do, we carry on putting in, I think there's about five along this run, with a pilot. Here we'd be very careful because we're close to that edge. Here it gets better as it opens up and then by the time we get to there it's losing contact. I think there might be one more here. And that way it just gives you a very neat way of getting the plug welds in without sending a drill bit through or pre-drilling it first like I said because you risk distortion on it a little bit. So it was an idea and it, it's worked. I've never tried it before so I'll be doing that more often probably. So great, um, I'll just prepare the rest and we'll do the same on the B pillar. See if we can find any more plug welds that are needed. There's not that many to have to do. It's only plug welded because you can't get the spot welder arms in. I mean, you might be able to poke it through the sill uh, stamp outs, the circular holes in the sills, but it's, I think it'd be tricky. I don't think it'd work without specially shaped spot welding arms. And this way, the plug weld is good and solid. It ain't going to go anywhere, especially when you've got your A pillar and B pillar. I think, because it's not an industrial grade spot welder as well, I think I prefer to rely on hard plug welds in this these areas. Here at least it's going to keep the car together. I mean, at the worst case, and these pinged, 
you're only talking about you're in a silk ping in a way and you could in theory repair it but that's not going to happen by the way but i'm just saying and um, you can see what they look like look there let's we'll see if the camera will focus for us it should do there it is it's focused so you can see the quality of the spot it's a lovely spot look at that it's a beautiful little spot what a honey that spot welder you can go out you can bang nails in with it all day and it'll come home and shoot dead on target every time look at that that's a lovely little spot welder those ones from Lidl they use them in Africa they're no good it's a quote from taxi driver by the way okay I think it's a quote from the taxi driver scene where uh, Easy Andy goes uh, with Robert De Niro to buy Robert De Niro goes to buy his guns. That spot welder, you can go out, you can bang nails in it all day, and it's going to come back, shoot dead on target every time. Look at that! It's a great little gun for a heck of a wallop. Right, continuing on. I'm talking rubbish. All the plugs are drilled and we're ready for plug welding. Cross to the end in the middle, sorry, a B pillar. Works great. Okay, so I'll get the plugs in, weld the firing up next then. We're nearly secure here. Quite enjoying this. In we go, light coming on so we can see properly. I'm going to show you a little tip which will help you if you're doing this job. Down we go. Here, use your cutter again, your hole cutter. There it is. Go through one layer, that's the inner sill. Then remove the little metal that comes out, the little circle comes out like that. Look, they come out. Then you can the depth gauge will allow you then to go to the next level which is the this piece here which we just welded straight remember we did that repair and um, okay so that you go through that then that leaves you with the outer sill flange so by plug welding now you join all three pieces in one without having to get at the back uh, with spot welds because you can't reach so rather than just attach the inner sill to the B pillar you want to attach it to all three sections of metal that's quite an important structural area so we want to make sure they're bonded well you can see just over this you'll just see at the end of my nail is the outer sill flange coming up between one two three pieces okay so that's it we've got the plug welds on by the way look getting a little bit flatter and then I'm going to go through and plug all three of those same as we did on the other side and that gets you a nice weld through all sections of metal and then once we're done with that we've got a few more plugs to do on the uh, just around the front of the front inner sill jacking point and then I think we're done we just need to dress up all the welds that's where we join the lower original structure to that so we are uh, looking good Okay, I'm going to get the welder on, plug them up, then I'll get the sander down and we'll start cleaning up our plugs. They're all on, you can see some more at the front, some are better than others, but all have got through. I did what everyone said, start from the outside of the plug, work your way in. 
then come in and go back out it seems to work building up strength already feels a lot more solid in here okay so we're gonna get on and do this weld here we go and just because I'm close up welding this is a welding jacket suede type material and then with your gloves on your arms are protected you just don't want to once you start getting in close like this you're starting getting cramped you're starting to get right into the job you don't want to sparks landing on your arms also UV rays so um, apart from my feet and my legs I've kept them out of the way but my arms are the the highest chance of getting hit so it's these gloves we've got a nice new pair from Ian as well Ian Ellis okay plugs in safety gear is on we're ready one of the last few plug welds of the inner sill job and we start dressing it up plug welds are complete all the sanding down is complete so we take the sander and down we go take all the heads off the plug welds and get everything neat so everything fits in nicely feels solid 87.5 63.6 but we'll pull that in a little bit sorry uh, not that one 630.6 but um, we can get 0.4 with this ratchet strap no problem across sill to sill they're probably out a mil each giving it a total of two two and a half three mil no problem with that i don't mind down here take down all the plugs a couple more spots have gone in work this area that one's got a little bit of um did debris dirt or something in it the welder just didn't like it at all i think it's a little bit of seam seal or something stuck in that plug so we'll have to clean that up uh, but this is all gone in nice. I'm really happy with the way that the inner and outer sill have fitted. There, curiously, Ford weld them little bits. They don't put a spot on it, so we've done the same and welded that bit. Here we've cleaned up. Round we go to the bead pillar. Then plugs go in. We join that uh, lower piece and blend that in nicely. Clean up the any rough bits where the spot weld was left. A little bit of cratering not cratering but like little spatters just took the edges off those you can see how it leaves a, a reveal of the well when you just clean up the edges so next we're going to just put the aluminium the metal filler in uh, and just smooth that in so that we don't see these repairs that we did the braids and stuff and we'll go around with the metal filler on places like here filling in any craters bringing it back in not much to do on that one pretty smooth already but nothing's just those little tiny pins and um, we'll get rid of them here where there's some pitting I'm going to use a very fine liquid filler and just go over that so it's very smooth round here we knock that tab tab down once there's some paint behind it and we'll knock it in this tab this locating tab straighten that up clean up put some spot welds in this it's already plug welded but we like to leave the imprint of a, a fake spot weld that's not even a fake spot weld it's real uh, all done really so that's for tomorrow it's another time warp for you it's another end of the day for me it's getting late I'm tired so very successful down we go to low level just to finish the day's activities and see how nice and straight we are down the bottom end just great gone on as good as the other side so that's two nice sills nice floor pans once we dress all this up and clean it and get some paint on it, stop it rusting, 
Then we do the cross member, we repair the damaged edges on that cross member, then we're going to fit that in here. Once that's in, we'll measure for the seat bolt brackets. On this side, we've already done the driver's side, as you saw in 15, episode 15. Chassis legs already done, and that takes us right up to that end. So we stop there, have a break. We'll prep all this area and clean it up and get paint on it. We'll have a break, then we move to the roof. Up oh, we go. And you can see the corrosion on the roof, how bad we are. But we've got plans for that, so don't worry. Got plans for you. Very good, you can hear my voice. I'm tiring now, it's been a long one. Let me have a break, let me get some food. I'll see you tomorrow over and out for tonight. Could be a time warp, could be the end of the film. Who knows? I just don't know where I am. I do like these quiet moments before the storm. We sit back and contemplate when the passenger seat's in. Then we can have another little chat if you want. For now, I'm going. find the rear car brake is uh, quite handy. Let's go back until he hit the car. Hang on, go on, keep going. Keep going. Well, I probably ordered it that though. <laughs> Look at him, Dave. Backwards. Feet work. Can you see me, Dave? Yes, yeah, all good. I can see everything from here. I'll proceed. <laughs> you cover me while you go on the main bomb run. I'll go round and cover you. Have a push of tea coffee. Over, tea coffee. Less sugar, tea jug. Gone up. Gone up. It's gone, they've done it! By Jove, when I first heard about your idea, I thought you was a raving lunatic. But Christ, whoa, gone, gone, gone! You've done it! Yeah. <laughs> 
Gonna suck more in. <laughs> this dolphin is not causing you this. Increased ventilation. Steady. 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 <laughs> I told you about the smoke. You're saying it's just, just the fucking uh, the crack case breathing. Dilly with us. <laughs> TC! Come on, boy! <laughs> you run for your money, not TC. Right. Rubbish. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of smoke. <laughs> Yes, it smells like sort of fields in here, you know. Lovely. Strawberry fields. Okay. Find that child. We'll see you very soon, guys. There you are. I wonder if you can make out the smoke from here. Can you see the smoke? 
Are you worried about scratching it? <laughs> ah, there's the smoke. Please see the smoke. <coughs>